What's going on you guys, this is Tech HD, and I have a very exciting video for you guys today. We're gonna to be taking a look at one of the most expensive gaming chairs. This is the Kratos Pro 4D Throne V2 from Collins, and it's going for over $3,300, which is an absolutely insane price. More expensive than the Herman Miller chair or any other gaming chair company, so let's dive in and go over why that is. What does it have to offer for that extreme price point? And just to let you guys know, I did partner with Collins for this video review. No, they didn't pay me for this video. I was just sent the chair to test out and was told how to use it and the key reasons for the price, but no money was exchanged and all of my thoughts and opinions are my own. But since we did partner for this video, if you guys are interested in buying this, you guys can use the code TECHHD at checkout to get 15% off, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that's actually almost $500 off, which is better than nothing. So with that all out of the way, let's dive into the review. So first, the major thing we're going to be covering is the packaging. Now, normally gaming chairs are delivered through UPS, FedEx, DHL, etc. But the Kratos 4D was delivered by an LTL freight and was on a pallet. The people called me ahead of time to let me know that they're on their way and delivery was amazing and handled with care. The packaging itself is huge and inside you can see that there is a ton of padding to protect the chair. Thankfully, everything arrived safe and sound and nothing arrived damaged. It comes with the box with the assembly instructions, a user guide for the transducer system, and we'll get into that in a bit. The wheels, the power cable, the hydraulic, and the cover. Then we got the wheelbase, the base with the armrest already installed, which I love, and finally the back piece. Now the installation part was very easy. You just install the wheels onto the wheelbase and then the hydraulic and the cover. Then apply the base and flip the chair over to screw in the backrest to the base in the middle and that is it. Now you are all set and ready to game. Now let's first take a look at the appearance and the build quality. The Kratos Pro 4D V2 has a powdered shine coated steel for all the hardware and a wooden internal base with a high density durable memory foam. The exterior uses an airplane thermal vinyl leather for the upholstery that is abrasive resistant, anti-flammable, cold crack resistant of up to negative 10 degrees, total life for longevity, and has a four layer construction for abrasive defense. The V2 models are handcrafted in the US and are made in small batches, so it is hand built, hand stitched, and handcrafted wood and cut to resonate with the transducers. Lastly, the armrest also has a 2 inch thick layer of memory foam. I have found the chair to be very comfortable, even with the transducers I could barely feel it and there is still plenty of padding in between and around to make it comfortable. Now this chair has a safety load weight of up to 300 pounds and just for reference I am 5 foot 10 weighing at around 225 pounds and the height of the backrest is perfect for me. It also has a recline angle of up to 105 degrees. Alright so I want to give you guys a quick comparison of the Kratos Pro 40 versus a very known in the gaming industry with gaming chairs, the DX Racer. So you can see right here I got them both side by side. Right away noticeably you can see that the Kratos Pro 40 could go a little bit higher. So for people that are taller it's going to be a little bit more comfortable with their legs. So you can see that the base is higher compared to the DX Racer and you can also tell by the armrest as well. The other major thing that I noticed is that most gaming chairs, typically the backrest is mounted onto the base on the side and then you screw them in on both the sides and then you have the ability to uh, recline back and forth and then they have notches that locks in so then you could be adjusting and you'll hear that click to know that it locks in. With the Kratos Pro 4D, it is not like that at all. So I'm gonna move this a little bit to the side and you can see here now with the Kratos Pro 4D, you can notice that there is nothing attached from the backrest to the base on the sides. It's actually attached on the middle in the bottom right here. So then one of the major things that I notice is that typically with the lever, it's on the side. The lever here to recline back and forth is on the bottom and you can lift that and lower it. So having it up, you have the ability to recline however much you want and then you can lock it in place. And the cool thing is, is that no matter how far you recline and you lock it, it's going to stay there. So I could go here and then it's just going to stay there and you don't have to worry about any clicking, any, you know, locking mechanism to make sure that's locked in place. Pretty much once you lock it, once you lower that lever and you lock it, that's it. It's not going to move. So I could be at any angle, any position that I want to like here I move it. I don't have to worry about it. Same thing. If I want to go lower.
So let me know down in the comments below on which locking mechanism you guys prefer. Do you guys prefer the regular version with the backrest being mounted on the side with the base and then using the little lever and having that locking mechanism and making sure it hits one of those notches and locks in place? Or do you like the freedom of not having to worry about notches or anything like that and it having it being connected into the back on the bottom and not have to worry about the sides and then you just use the lever and no matter where you are it's going to lock in place it's not going to move at all let me know what you guys prefer i also noticed that the chair could go a bit higher than most gaming chairs i could actually dangle my feet or have them on the wheelbase comfortably so if you're as tall as me or taller and you've complained about the chair not going high enough you shouldn't have a problem with this one Lastly, with the armrest, it uses the same material as the backrest and has the thick memory foam and is one of the most comfortable armrests I've used. Now let's get into the transducers that are built into the chair. The Kratos Pro 4D has two built-in haptics that respond to whatever you're playing or watching, one on the backrest and one on the base. Each could reach up to 100 watts, equaling to 200 watts of peak power and giving you a stereo dynamic feedback. The control panel is on the right side of the chair and there are multiple ways to connect your device to the chair. It has a USB input, an auxiliary port, a TV button, and finally it has Bluetooth. There is also a headphone port to listen to the game when you're hardwired. There is also a headphone knob to control the volume and a knob to control the intensity of the haptic feedback. Lastly, this control panel has a built-in battery that can give you from 5 to 8 hours of use and there are indicated lights to let you know that the battery is low and there is also a DC port to charge the chair but you can also continue using it while you're plugged in and charging. Now, if nothing is connected to the chair, it will automatically enable Bluetooth and begin looking for a connection. If something is connected to the input ports, it automatically disables Bluetooth. The Bluetooth will also automatically connect to the last device it paired, so you don't have to constantly pair it every time you turn the chair on. Now, let me show you the multiple ways you can connect the Kratos Pro 4D throne to your devices. For a console like the Xbox Series X and PS5, you can connect your controller directly to the auxiliary port with a TRS to TRS cable. Then you can connect your headphones to the headphone port and control the audio with the knob. Keep in mind that the headphones have to use a TRS cable, not a TRS cable. Otherwise, it won't work, so gaming headsets with a microphone uses a TRS cable, so those will not work. That also means that you won't be able to speak to your teammates through your controller and headset, so you would need to use an external microphone in order to speak to them. Another way to connect a chair to your console is by using an HDMI audio extractor. You connect your console to the audio extractor and then to your monitor or TV and that will also give you an auxiliary out port to connect directly to the aux port on the chair. By doing that you also don't need to connect your headphones directly to the chair and you can connect it to your controller and still be able to talk to your friends or you could even go with a wireless headset like what I do with the SteelSeries Arctic Nova Pro Wireless with the Game DAC. If you play on multiple devices like I do, I could also use an HDMI switch with an audio extractor built in and still be hardwired to the chair, but easily be able to switch from the Xbox, PS5, Nintendo Switch, and gaming PC and not need to do anything with the wiring. The last option is if you want a fully wireless setup without the need to plug anything to the chair, you can use an HDMI audio extractor or the switch and a Bluetooth audio receiver and transmitter. I plug the device into the HDMI audio extractor or switch using an optical cable and I set it to the transmitter mode. I pair the device to the chair and you are now set to game fully wireless with nothing plugged into the chair. Keep in mind that the Bluetooth option will give you a bit of a delay compared to being hardwired but in my experience it's milliseconds of a difference and it's not that noticeable unless you're really focusing on it. I personally prefer the fully wireless option because I don't have to worry about cables hanging from the chair and getting caught on the wheel and if I move around and it accidentally pulls from the port, damaging it to the point that it stops working. The team at Collins recommended purchasing a 90 degree angle male to female audio adapter so that if the cable does get accidentally pulled, it will get disconnected from the adapter and not from the port on the control panel. Also, everything that I mentioned and personally used and know that it works is going to be linked down in the description below. They are Amazon affiliate links, so full transparency. If you guys use and purchase from those links, it will help me out and I would greatly appreciate it. Gaming with the haptic feedback was amazing and you felt everything from gunshots and explosions when playing an FPS game like Call of Duty and Halo to the engine of your car when you're playing Forza. You really get that extra immersion and punchy feel while gaming. The haptic feedback is so strong, I typically keep it at about 50%. There's just so much strength when having it any higher. Now the setup for watching movies and shows in the living room on the TV or on the projector is pretty much the same.
For me, I used the Allure Tech Bluetooth receiver and plugged it directly into my AV receiver using an optical cable and now I could feel everything wirelessly. Like I mentioned before, you really get that extra immersion when you're feeling what's going on. Feeling the intense music kicking in when watching a movie, the sound effects when the characters are throwing punches, everything is just felt and it's amazing to experience. Lastly is using the Kratos 4D throne with your phone. I just connected my iPhone to the chair with Bluetooth and then connected my headphones directly to the chair and controlled the volume with the knob on the control panel. I tested this with music and it felt so surreal, feeling the vocals, the drops, the bass of the music was unbelievable and I listened to a punch of EDM and this was just perfect for that. So I've been using the chair for almost three months now and if you guys have tuned into my streams on Twitch, you will have seen me messing around a lot with the chair and the multiple ways I hooked it up and all the games I tested with it. And the ways that I mentioned on connecting the chair to the gaming consoles is just a couple ways to do it. There are multiple other ways to do it but those were just a few ways that I preferred and worked best for me. And I have truly loved using this chair, not just for gaming and using the haptic feedback, but also because of the comfort and the build quality that this offers is really good. There have been no wear and tears from what I've seen, only time will tell on how it turns out. It feels really comfortable after sitting for hours for not just gaming, but also streaming and editing for long periods of time. As I mentioned before, there is a lot of high density durable memory foam and I could barely feel the transducers on the base and on the lower back, but I know that it's there because the transducers need to be touching your body in order to give you guys the full effect, but it's not uncomfortable. Now the overall experience of the haptic feedback built into the Kratos Pro 4D throne has been amazing and has felt very immersive and you just need to try it to believe it for yourself. Watching movies, listening to music, and of course gaming has been next level and it brings you much closer to what you're doing. Now yes, you do need to buy some extra accessories in order for it to work on your devices, but there are many ways to connect it and it's up to you on how you want to do it and what you'll be mainly using the chair for. Now of course, this product is not perfect, no product is, and so a couple of cons that I have is number one, the headphone port. It's not the best quality and you can hear some hissing in the background if you have the volume high. The way that I fix this is that I bought a ground loop noise isolator and by plugging this in between my headphones and my chair, it works great but it does reduce the volume by about 20%, so you do need to boost the volume more, but it's still pretty loud to be able to hear everything. The second con I have is the armrest. While I do love the extra cushion and comfort, I'm so used to the 4D armrest that other gaming chair companies provide to give you a ton of flexibility on how you wanna use the armrest. The Kratos Pro 4D just goes up and down, and that's pretty much it. The team at Collins did let me know the reason they don't offer the 4D armrest and it's because they want to minimize the number of moving parts so it doesn't rattle and make a noise when using the haptic feedback, which does make sense but I hope they eventually find a way to implement it. That would be something really nice to have. Also the armrest is not really that smooth when trying to raise it or lower it. It's stiff and gets stuck and you do need to use a good amount of force. Maybe applying something like WD-40 would help. Also, I see what the team at Collins meant when they mentioned minimizing the amount of moving parts because this little plastic part in between the armrest and the plate was loose and would rattle and make noise when using the haptic feedback. So I just removed it. Now the last part of the video is to help you guys understand why this chair costs over $3,000. For one, each chair is handmade, handcrafted, and hand stitched and they only make a handful of quantities so they are very precise and detailed with each chair they make. Not only that, but the materials used are of higher quality than what other gaming chairs offer, so that could last you for many years. So cost of materials and labor is a big thing. Not only that, but the people have to tailor the wood and memory foam to work well with the transducers so that it could transfer the haptic feedback seamlessly without having any issues. Of course, the control panel and the transducers are custom, created by Collins and not by a third-party company. The way that I think of this is that it is a premium luxury product, and whatever hobby you're into, there's always gonna be premium products. I literally just visited my local bike mart and they have bicycles ranging from $3,000 to $7,000 and even more, and I could just never imagine myself spending that much money on a bike, but for a professional cyclist, that's nothing to them, and they know quality and the benefits of it. Barbers and stylists are spending $1,000 on shears because of the quality. Audiophiles spend thousands of dollars on high quality speakers, cables, amplifier, and the receiver to experience the best audio quality while listening to music or watching movies. 
people spend thousands of dollars on an OLED TV to experience the best visual quality when watching a movie or their favorite show. High quality instruments use the best materials and are usually handcrafted very similar to this chair. So that's why this chair costs over $3,000. It is a luxury product. And of course, this isn't for everybody, but if you wanna experience the music you're listening to, if you are a movie junkie and you wanna feel everything, or if you're a gamer that wants to be fully immersed, then this will be a great option to have. And if the Kratos Pro 4D is too much, Collins also sells their Vibe 4D haptic strap belt to give you a similar experience. And if you live in Dallas, Texas, Miami, or Arizona, they also have some dealers that showcase their chairs so you could try it out and see for yourself if it's worth it or not. Lastly, Collins does attend some trade shows to showcase the Kratos Pro 4D, so I would keep an eye on their social media to see what they'll be attending. So if you really are interested in getting the chair but want to try it out first, definitely keep an eye on that. Also, a final reminder that if you guys do purchase from their website, don't forget to use code TECHHD to get 15% off. That's up to $500 off, which will definitely help you out. And their website also offers financing options with Klarna up to 24 months and with Shop up to 12 months. So you have some options to go with. But there you guys have it. That is my thoughts and review of the Kratos Pro 40 Throne V2. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and everything that I mentioned will be linked down in the description below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that you guys can be notified whenever I upload a new video. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. As always, TechHD. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.